Well, good day, dudes. I'm back on the boat. Okay, so I'm uh, up on the roof of the boat. I've made the decision that I'm going to go with uh, lithium iron on board. Well, we don't wear skimpy bikinis. Hell, it frightens me when I take my shirt off. There's definitely no one pregnant here. This is motor sailing for old dudes. We do live on a boat, and we do cruise extensively along the Australian coast. Join us and visit some great destinations. Learn how to look after a boat and live off grid. It might even get you enthused to do the same thing. Hey, stay out there till you can't. So there's a bit to do. Uh, the panels I've got on the roof here are pretty old. They're old BP solar panels. They've been good panels and they're still putting out power. Um, but unfortunately, uh, these panels are all 60 watt. And the panels these days, you get a lot more power out of a smaller footprint. So I am going to replace these panels. Uh, the wind gen, it's done 18 years of pretty good work. It's uh, an air um, breeze. It's done a pretty good job, but it's very noisy. And I think I'm going to just remove that and get rid of it because, um, because of the noise factor, but also because of the fact that once I put more panels up here, that's going to do a fair bit of shading. So I want to get rid of that, and I probably won't need it. I am going to leave the gen set on the boat. Uh, I'll use that... Uh, as a backup for the really overcast days where you don't get any sun but uh, I think the rest of the system should be um, able to cope uh, with what I'm putting on. I'm going for about 600 amp hours of lithium iron batteries uh, and I want to put four 400 watt panels on the roof here. Now those panels are 1730 by 11.34 so I'm just seeing where I can actually place them the best way to uh, to fit them on the roof I've got some ideas but um, we'll work that out and I think it'll end up a pretty good system I've got my mate Bruce he's uh, the guru on auto electrics and he's just put lithium iron on his boat so uh, Bruce is coming down next week and we're going to have a chat about my system how I'm going to change it blah 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 so uh, I'll go with what he says. So I should be able to put a fair bit of um, panel area up on the roof here. I've got this big roof and uh, I may as well use it. Anyway, let's see what we can get up here. This is my current battery compartment. As well as being a bit of food storage and other stuff storage as well. Originally, I was thinking about moving the whole setup into the uh, compartment in front of this compartment. It is an option, still an option. The only thing I don't like about that is that the this is a watertight bulkhead that uh, this gear is mounted on. Uh, the other side of that bulkhead. Uh, there is water tanks and water pumps and things like that so I think I'd rather keep my electric separated from that uh, water system in there I think it makes a lot of sense if you get a busted hose I know I have had fittings let go and uh, water spraying around in there so it's not what you want on your electric so I think I'm going to uh, keep this as my battery uh, storage area and where I'll keep all the gear there is enough room in here on this bulkhead to mount everything. And this is my current house bank. So I have three 105 amp hour deep cycle AGMs there. Um, I have a 700 watt uh, inverter. And that is a Xantrax 40 watt battery charger. That battery charger has done 20 years service and still running perfectly, so it's been good gear. That is a DC to DC charger that I run off my port side motor, so that charges this bank 
uh, when there's when the motors are running. That's a solar regulator for the rear array I've got. I'm probably going to keep that as part of the plan. Um, and yeah, it's all a little bit messy. I understand where everything is, so it's really easy for me. Uh, I've got a few things marked, but I think we'll make it a lot neater um, when we do the new job. I've noticed that the batteries um, are about three years old, so they're probably halfway through their usable life. I'm never sure with these um, AGMs. The first lot I put in, I got six years out of them. The next lot I got two, so it's a little bit hit and miss what you get out of them. Hopefully with lithium iron, I'm going to get 10 or more years at least. I'm hoping that uh, lithium iron is um, the end of it as far as worrying about batteries go for me. So we'll see how we go. So this is uh, the system on the boat. BEP switches, they've been there for 20 years. I'm going to retain them. That's my 12 volt panel and that's my 240 volt panel. So there'll be a few changes to make, but most of those switches will stay as they are. The battery switches down the bottom there will no longer be needed, so we'll probably disconnect them. And then that's the inverter control that will no longer be needed, so there'll be a hole there to repair, I guess. Lots of analog uh, instruments up here to man manage uh, solar panels and the wind generator. So you can see that um, those panels are still working. It's an overcast day, but they're still putting out about uh, probably three or four amps. But all of these gauges will no longer be needed. It's all done smartly now, so I'll have a few more holes to fill up. Well, it's a wet day and uh, excellent day to go shopping. So I'm just heading down to pick up Bruce and uh, we're going to head in towards town and have a look at what's available um, as far as chargers, inverters, solar controllers and uh, probably all the Victron stuff. Anyway, we'll go and have a look today and see what's available and what we can come up with. We all know Bruce, he's uh, done a fair bit of work on my boat. This is Bruce's boat and he's just gone to lithium, so we're going to have a look at his system first and uh, work it from there. This is my system. I've just um, I'll turn some lights on here. It might help a little bit. Um, the other battery's under here. Yep. So I've got two 326 amp hour lithiums, uh, and that's my start battery. I use the one start battery for both motors. So every boat's different of course so some will have so that, that's your start battery that's the start battery these are the lithium cells there's two lithiums there's one there and there's one underneath here okay that's my dc to dc charger for charging uh from the engines yep so that basically runs off the start battery in into the uh house batteries and of course that's my n drive battery charger i used to have two of these but one of them let the smoke out, we might say. <laughs> so rather than buy a second one, I was a bit annoyed with that, seeing it wasn't that old. Um, I just put in a power supply. A lithium charger is just a constant current, constant voltage power supply. That's what lithium chargers are. So um, rather than buy a brand new flash charger, as a backup, this, this, this power supply will only work well, I'll only use it should something happen to my existing charger. That's what these terminals are hanging here. So if, oh, okay. if ever so I, you can hook it up. So I can hook it up if ever yeah. I need to use it. All right. So that's just a bit of redundancy. Yep. 
Um, but yeah, there's the, uh, the two the two lithiums. So that full river there is uh, AGM? That's an AGM. Yeah. Yeah. So it's similar to what I want to do. I want to keep a bit of AGM but go lithium as well. Yeah, but I use that battery as my start battery. So yeah. that, that starts both engines. Yeah. And yeah. then I've got both alternators running back into that. Yeah. You can't always do that because some alternators, if you've got a two engines and um, you put both of them together onto the one battery, some alternators, not all, but you will have issues with your tachometer if the tachometer on one motor may stop because what happens is one alternator sees the other alternator and uh, they think that the battery is charged. So one alternator will actually shut down. So then you're going to lose your tacho um, and basically one alternator just sits there spinning around doing nothing. So you can't always put two engines onto the one battery. You may have issues, but it, it all depends on the brand of alternator. Nippon Denso and Atashi uh, normally have issues. Bosch are normally pretty good. Bosch alternators don't seem to suffer from that um, very often at all. Okay, so this is where the uh, this is where the brains trust comes in. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an overall bit of an idea on what we can do. Um, start with a bit of a drawing to plan out what you're going to put together and that way you've got an idea on what you're going to need to go and buy and how it's all going to work. So we'll start off, you'll have your DC to DC charger. If we use an Enerdrive charger we can adjust the current output because we've only got a 40 amp alternator. If you have a 50 amp DC to DC uh, charger and you try and pull 40 amps out of an alternator constantly, you're going to cook it within a couple of hours. So you've got to protect your alternator. Um, one of the main things that, uh, that it, it's okay if you've got a, a um, 100 amp alternator or 120 amp alternator, you can put in a 50 amp DC to DC converter, but we're dealing with a 40 amp alternator, so we've got to protect that. And really we want to limit it to about 20 to 25 amps because a lithium battery will suck as much as you give it. If you give it 100 amps, it'll take 100 amps. And alternators are not designed to put out their maximum output continuously. So we need to be able to pull that down. So if we use a DC, uh, an, an Enerdrive DC to DC converter, we can limit that down. That'll connect straight into our inverter and then charge the, the lithium battery. Um, We'll use two Victron solar regs for the two banks of solar panels. Um, and that'll run through to a, to a bus bar that we, again, hook straight up to the batteries. If we put in a shunt, we can have um, the fancy, you know, monitors and all the rest of it. We've sort of got to decide whether we want to do all that. The other thing with the Enerdrive DC to DC uh, charger or is you've got a possibility of three banks of batteries. So we can put in an extra set of cables to run to our, what Norm's got as a winch battery as a bit of redundancy in case we ever have starboard motor alternator troubles or we were going to reuse the Red Arc DC to DC converter that's already on the boat. If either of those two pack it in, we've got the possibility of charging that winch battery off the end drive, whereas the Victron one doesn't have that facility. Victron stuff is only one battery, one setting. So it's great stuff. I mean, it's probably the best on the market, but it doesn't have the flexibility that the Enerdrive one has. So that's why I think we should use an Enerdrive DC to DC charger. Um, that's about it, I think. So that's an overview, just an overview. That's the simplest way of doing it. I don't know what Norm's going to actually do. <laughs> well, but I think Norm's going to do what... Bruce recommends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of electronics on boats. Electronics and salt air just don't mix. For 50 years, I've been an auto electrician for 50 years, and even today, I'm not a fan of the whiz bang gadgetry that uh, Victron put out with all their, um, their screens and their uh, links system. All very nice, all very flash, but in reality, how often do you actually use it? 
how often do you sit there and punch into that screen what you're going to look at. You've got Bluetooth on your battery, that's going to give you all the information you need on your battery. You've got Bluetooth on your two Victron uh, solid regulators, so that's going to give you all the information you need on your, um, on your solar inputs and outputs. The only other thing that the Victron system gives you is it gives you your AC inputs and outputs and current AC. Really, you're not interested in that. You don't need to know it. It looks after itself. So as long as you're monitoring your batteries and your solar, and you can do that by the existing Bluetooth. Our first stop is Big Wee Batteries in Slacks Creek. We meet Ying, who shows us their products and gives us a guided tour around the factory. So we use that to cut our insulation board what built inside the battery, our BWB lithium board. So we think that uh, this is probably the units we're going to go with. They're two 400 amp hour uh, batteries. It'll give us redundancy. They've both got their own BMS and we can wire them up in parallel to the inverter. We did look at uh, the 800 amp hour battery by itself which is a good looking unit, but we figured we need to be Hercules to get it into the boat, so. Yeah, that's a good one. Looking at all their, um, their workmanship, it's very well done. A lot of the stuff they're using is good quality gear, and um, yeah, very impressed. At Big Way, they've got lots of um, fittings, circuit breakers, everything you want for doing the conversion. I'm actually getting some Anderson plugs from myself from a solar system. The uh, red ones don't interchange with the grey, so you use those for your solar system and the grey ones for your batteries and stuff, that way you can't get them mixed up. And uh, Big Wee have got them for two dollars each. That's very well priced. I think all their other stuff's pretty good value it's too. All, it? It's all, I've just actually been looking at it and um, mm. yeah, very well priced. And the quality appears to be right up there. So we've come to Springer Solar to have a look at the uh, Victron stuff. I guess Cell's familiar with that. And they also have Enerdrive and down the back wall there they've got quite a few panels as well, so we might have put it there. So we think this is a great way to mount our panels. They go in the corner. And we're sort of thinking that maybe we can sicker-flex them to the roof. It should save a lot of muck on the roof. And because they're such a big panel, I think be, these would be uh, run along the edge. Yeah. Just to take out any bow that might, um, might develop. Fantastic. Mm. Well, we had a good day out... Uh, shopping yesterday, we weren't actually shopping, we were just looking at what's available. Um, I've made a couple of decisions and I've got a few more to make. As far as batteries go, I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'm going to go with Big Way. Uh, they're a battery builder here in Brisbane. They import the cells from China, as everyone does, but they build a really nice battery and um, I think the way I'm going to go is I'm going to buy two 400 amp hour um, lithium iron battery cells. They come in a stainless steel uh, enclosure with their own BMS, 200 amp BMS, and they're a really good solid looking unit, so I'll be happy with them. We went to another place and looked at um, all the other gear, the uh, Multi Plus 2, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm going to put a 3000 watt inverter, a Multi Plus 2 inverter on. That'll give them the option to splitting up the um, AC feed, so I'll run one to my hot water service and um, the one to the GPOs throughout the boat, so that'll split the circuits up a little bit. I suppose the big question is, why am I going lithium? Well, when I'm out cruising, which is where I want to be most of the time, my day starts with getting out of bed and starting the gen set. And why I have to do that all of my cooking on the boat is 240 volt. And why it is 240 volt is when I built the boat, I built it to survey, and I didn't really want to put gas on the boat because it was just another set of hoops you had to jump through to get the boat uh, into survey. Um, so originally the boat wasn't going to be 
used as a cruising boat and I was just going to um, have it in the marina most of the time and had the gen set there for uh, using 240 volt when I was out. Of course it's changed now that I'm um, cruising and every morning I start the gen set, run it for I suppose half an hour, cook my breakfast, heat up the hot water, it's just a normal um, household hot water service doesn't heat off the motors or anything like that just a normal room hot water service so we're going to replace that with a, a smaller unit that I'll be able to run off the inverter and this system's worked very well for the last uh, 16 or 17 years that I've been living on the boat but I do hate starting that gen set every morning a little bit of noise involved so if you're in an anchorage you don't want to upset other people it's not too intrusive but there is a bit of noise involved with it and the other thing is every time I start it, I know that I'm going to be half an hour or an hour closer to when I have to service it. So that's something. And the other thing, it's running on diesel and, and not that environmentally friendly uh, either. The inverter and uh, all of the charging and uh, inverting regime will be Victron stuff. I think they make pretty good stuff. I was going to go with all the whiz -bang gear, touch screens, and little panels that you could monitor everything with and my mate Bruce uh, said what are you thinking man keep it simple uh, those touch screens are probably something that's going to let you down so we're going to have a, a lot more simple system than that that's going to cost me probably in the order of about fifteen hundred dollars anyway and we're going to keep it pretty simple and just monitor it uh, by Bluetooth all of the Victron stuff if you buy the smart stuff is Bluetooth capable get an app put it on your phone and monitor it on your mobile phone so I think that's the way we're going to go and um, Bruce has got everything pretty well worked out and what we need and what we have to do so it's just a matter of uh, gathering up all the bits and pieces and um, getting into the job so I think the move to lithium is a good one for me people that I've talked to and there's four or five of them there have said you won't know yourself when you go uh, with the change uh, should be good so uh, yeah let's get it done and see how it changes my life so come along on the trip uh, we'll show you the ins and outs of doing it and um, maybe something you might want to do on your boat well I hope you enjoyed that one dudes I guess you noticed I don't do patreon and uh, that other stuff that helps you make a dollar but there is a way you can help you see this little button here and ring the bell that'll notify you when I post a new video and it really does help me get the channel out there cheers dude see you next week mm -hmm.